Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So today's tip is from Amber who says, my father has been in a coma for 17 days with blood draining from the brain, high blood pressure. They have a tracheostomy in his throat and he won't wake up. He's breathing on his own with the help of the tracheostomy. What is going to be the outcome? So it looks like uh, Amber's father was in an accident. And if blood is draining from the brain, he must have got some sort of brain injury. And it's been 17 days. Now, it's clear to me that, you know, the old adage, what I've been saying over and over again, that the biggest for, the biggest challenge for families in intensive care is that they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what to look for. They don't know what questions to ask. They don't know their rights and they don't know how to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's clear to me that, you know, Amber is in that situation where the question is great, Amber, but there's so much information missing. You know, he's got blood draining from the brain. What did he have? Did he have a traumatic brain injury, right? Does he have an ICP monitor? Are they measuring his brain pressures? Are they, uh, is he still in an induced coma because of the, brain injury, right? Has he had a midline chip? How are they treating the brain injury? Is he on manitol? Is he getting hypertonic saline? Is he paralyzed potentially? Probably not paralyzed because he's now breathing on his own. But was he paralyzed? Because if he was paralyzed because of the brain injury or potentially other injuries, that might delay him waking up. And when I say paralyzed, I mean chemically paralyzed with medications, right? So after a significant trauma in ICU, 17 days is actually not a long time. And, you know, if he's now breathing on his own, but he's not awake yet, that is the first sign of getting him awake. Now, the next step here should be that if your dad is, you know, stable, can they start gently mobilizing him, physical therapy, you know, sitting him up in bed very gently to begin with, especially if he had a, a brain injury, you know, then continuously wean him off the ventilator. You know, 17 days in ICU after such a massive event is not a long time. You've got to give this time. And I know the ICU team might be, you know, putting pressure on you saying, oh, you've got to make a decision. Do you want to continue treatment or do you want to just stop everything? You know, you haven't shared how old your dad is. You haven't shared you know, does he have any pre-medical history? You know, the more you can share here, the more the better our answers will be. But with the information that you've given, Amber, you know, you got to give this time. You know, people recover from brain injuries in their own time. And lo and behold, they may never recover. You don't know. But one thing is for sure, if you're not trying, well, you have 0% chance of your father recovering, you know. So you haven't shared that the intensive care team is pushing towards end of life, which I take is a good thing, but they might if your dad isn't improving in a time frame that is convenient for the intensive care team or that they think is appropriate. They might try and keep pushing you towards end of life, but it's also a good sign that they put in a tracheostomy, right? That buys your dad time to uh, wake up in his own time, you know, wean off the ventilator in his own time if he's then not able to swallow or cough because of the injury he still has more time then you know to manage an un unsafe airway you know with the tracheostomy so you know it looks like he's in a reasonably stable position at the moment he's just not waking up uh, in the time frame that you might expect him to wake up and he may, he may not wake up in the time frame that the intensive care team uh, wants him to wake up so be patient here please you know and again given that he is breathing on his own now that is also a sign that he must be a little bit more awake compared to before he had the trach before he had the trach he was probably in an induced coma and maybe he still is maybe they're slowly lowering sedation and opiates you know those are the type of questions you need to ask you know when he's breathing on his own what does that exactly look like does he breathe on a CPAP or on a pressure support uh, um, level you know, uh, what medications is he still on? What do chest X-rays show? What do arterial blood gases show? 
have they done a CT scan of the brain, an MRI scan of the brain, an EEG of, of the brain? Because he had a brain injury, is he having seizures? Is, if he is having seizures, what anti-seizure medication is he on? And is that still keeping him sedated? If he doesn't have any seizures or he didn't have any seizures, he's probably still at risk of seizures because, um, you know, because of the brain injury. And again, they're probably giving anti-epileptic or anti-seizure medications that also often have a sedative effect, even though it's mild, right? So those are all the type of questions you need to uh, ask. And, you know, it's the easiest way here to get to the bottom of things is, you know, for us to look at the medical records or for me to talk to the doctors and nurses directly and ask all the questions that need to be asked, but you haven't even considered asking, you know, also, how did he get to this point? You know, did he have brain surgery? Like I said before, you know, have they measured or checked his ICP, his intracranial pressure, also known as brain pressure, and his CPP, his cranial perfusion pressure, right? Are they still monitoring that? Is that still an issue? Right. So those are all the questions you need to ask. And then, you know, come back to me again. But the quickest way to deal with a situation like that is really for me to talk to the doctors and nurses directly, ask all the questions that you haven't even considered asking. And depending on their response, I can, you know, uh, ask counter questions straight away. I have worked in intensive care for over 20 years in three different countries where I also worked as a nurse unit manager for over five years. And I've been consulting and advocating for families in intensive care for over 10 years now with excellent outcomes, really making a difference to families' lives, getting great outcomes, saving lives. You can look that up on our testimonial section or on our podcast section where we have client testimonials and client interviews. Now, that is my quick tip for today. If you have a loved one in intensive care and you need help, go to intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or simply send an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. Also, we have a membership for families in intensive care um, at intensivecarehotline.com. Go there and click on the membership and you can get access to the membership area there or you can get uh, direct access to the membership by going to intensivecaresupport.org directly. In the membership, you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in the membership area and via email and we answer all questions intensive care related. Now, I also offer one-on-one consulting over the phone via Skype, via Zoom, via WhatsApp, and I talk to intensive care teams directly, and I ask all the questions that you haven't even considered asking, but you must ask so that you can get, so that you can make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power, and influence. Now, I also represent you in family meetings with intensive care teams as a professional advocate. So again, that you are represented well and that intensive care teams can't just do whatever they want if you don't have an advocate by your side. Once again, I've worked in intensive care for over 20 years. I know exactly what's to come. I know exactly how to position your critically ill loved one's position and condition, right? Families in intensive care have no idea what's what's happening. And once again, they don't know what they don't know. We also offer medical record reviews in real time if you have a loved one in intensive care, so we can give you a second opinion in real time. We also offer medical record reviews after intensive care if you have unanswered questions, if you are suspecting medical negligence, negligence or if you are simply needing closure. Now, if you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, share the video with your friends and families and comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.